everybody. I'm glad to have you joining me today. Today we are going to talk about spring. We're not going to talk about spring just as one of the seasons in the year, that, as in spring, summer, autumn, or fall, and winter. We're going to talk about spring as related to Easter. That was two weeks ago. Because it has to do with life, spring does, and bringing life from something that is different, just like Jesus became alive again after he was dead. So I think that that is a good connection for us to make. So my first story today is called, very properly for the Washington area, the Cherry Blossom Tree, and it is by Jan Godfrey and illustrated by Jane Cope. So let's begin with the Cherry Blossom Tree. It was Grandpa's birthday. Harriet and the cousins had come to his birthday party. Harriet had sewn a great many kisses on her card for Grandpa. There's hundreds and thousands and millions of kisses, all for you, she said, because you're so old. How old are you, Grandpa? Very old, said Grandpa. I'm five, said Harriet. Will I be old soon? Not quite yet, Grandpa said, smiling. Harriet smiled back and ate a very large slice of birthday cake. <laughs> One of Grandpa's presents was a shiny new spade. Usually we call a spade a shovel. I'll try it out right now, said Grandpa. I'll help, said Harriet. They went out to the garden, the wild part of the garden, where the long grass and the dandelions and the apple trees grew. Harriet blew the dandelion. She watched the fluffy seeds floating out into the sky. Where do the grand dandelion seeds grow? asked Harriet. Over the hills and far away, said Grandpa. Then they will fall into the earth and next year, grow new dandelions. Harriet ran to the very end of the garden. Grandpa walked much slower because he had sore knees. Every year on Grandpa's birthday, Harriet's favorite cherry tree was covered with pink blossoms. But the cherry tree wasn't there. Where is she gone? asked Harriet. She stood in the on the stump. Stump. Branches of the cherry tree lay on the ground. It fell down, said Grandpa. It was very, very old and it was time for it to die. Harry held Grandpa's big hand tightly, and they looked at the wild garden together. You're very, very old, said Harriet. Are you going to die? She remembered how much she cried when her Smokey, her dog, had died. She felt sad. She loved Grandpa very much. Please don't die, Grandpa, said Harriet. Everything that is born has to die sometime, said Grandpa. And that was making us sad. But the death is the beginning, like waking up after a long sleep. God loves us so much and wants us to be together even after our bodies have worn out. Everyone, asked Harriet. Everything? She thought about what, uh, about tiny ants and wriggly worms and huge elephants and snakes and snails and tortoises? 
everything is new and different when God is, when God, where God is, said Grandpa. We can all go to heaven, heaven. Anywhere, anyone who loves God can go to be with God when they die. What's heaven like? asked Harriet. I don't know, said Grandpa, but imagine you are a new chick inside an eggshell. The world you see is all quiet and dark. Then one day you hatch into this bright sunny world and everything is dazzling and very different. Harriet shut her eyes. She pretended she was a new chick hatching out into this world in Grandpa's sunny garden. When she opened her eyes, the sun was dazzling. The garden was beautiful. In heaven, will there it be different too? Will I be different, said Grandpa? Um, but you'll know me, and I'll know you, and we'll have new, new bodies, and they won't hurt or creak or wear out or get tired or get old or get sick. Think of a caterpillar. One day it turns into a dull brown chrysalis, and then... Then it's a beautiful butterfly, said Harriet, and she flew around the garden on her pretend butterfly wings. Do you remember those poppy seeds last summer, asked Grandpa? They looked like dust, but they'll grow into beautiful, lovely red poppies, said Harriet. Grandpa dug down into the earth with his shiny new spade. Look, there's a cherry pit, said Harriet, scrolling, say, see, seedling, excuse me. The seedling had split open and a little seedling was growing out of it. See the little seedling growing out of the cherry pit right here? That shoot has started to grow down there in the dark earth, said Grandpa. One day after a long, long time, it will grow into a new cherry tree with blossoms and cherries. It won't look a bit like a pit. Shall we plant it then? Harriet clapped her hands. She and Grandpa planted the little cherry pit together. Harriet was glad that God made everything new and alive. God made chicks hatch out of shells and caterpillars turn into butterflies. God made dusty seeds grow into potty, poppies. She jumped up and down in the hay. Also grew cherry trees out of cherry pits. Six o'clock, said Grandpa, picking up his shiny new spade. Time to go indoors. There's another day tomorrow. They went back into the house together. The cousins were looking at old photographs. One of them was of Grandpa when he was a little boy. Boy, did he ever look different. Where have you been, asked the cousins. Planting a new cherry tree, said Harriet. With my new shiny spade, said Grandpa. And Grandpa and Harriet smiled at each other as they thought about God's new beginnings and the cherry tree's wonderful secret. So that's a really good story about spring coming alive again for all of us and that God has made the spring just for that purpose. My next story is also about things that grow in the spring. And I wanted to tell you before we read the story, this book is called The First Tulips in Holland. I will bet that some of you have gardens and that in your gardens you have tulips blooming right now. Lots and lots of colors of tulips. 
So let's find out about it. The title, The First Tulips in Holland, comes from, there used to be a country, well the country is still there but it has a different name, in Europe called Holland. Now it is called the Netherlands. And people from Holland and people now from the Netherlands are called the Dutch. So we need to know that before we read the story. The other reason I want to read this story is it's very special to me for one reason. Several years ago, I lived in the country of Turkey. Turkey is one of the countries in the Middle East, or the Middle East. There are lots of countries there, some of them you have heard about in the news. Besides Turkey, there is Iran, which used to be Persia, Iraq, Syria, and other countries. So let's hear about the first tulips in Holland and see where they come together. are, from the book, some tulips, and they will probably look like some that you have seen, whether in your garden or elsewhere. And I want to show you, along with that, this artwork of tulips from Turkey. And see how they, these are all, these red, orangey red blossoms are all tulips. <coughs> and the artist in Turkey most always the artist draws tulips like that, but they sure don't look like the tulips in the pictures from Holland, do they? But let's find out. This is by Phyllis Krasilovsky and illustrated by S.D. Schindler. <laughs> Most people think that tulips have always grown in Holland, but that's not true. <clears throat> Look at this big, huge picture. Tulips first grew in a country called Persia, or also in a country called Turkey, which is still here. Many, many, many years ago, there they ha had been admired by a Dutch visitor called Hendrik. No one knew the name of the flowers, so Hendrik called them tulips. <clears throat> Tulip is the Turkish word for turban. A turban is this headdress that all the men in these pictures are wearing. Tulip is the Turkish word for turban, which is the sort of hat that the Persian men or the Turkish men were wearing. They looked as if they were the same shape to Hendrik. Hendrik brought some tulip bulbs. The bulbs are what tulips and something like daffodils grow out of. They're like big seeds instead of the small seeds of the poppies in our other story. Hendrik brought some tulip bulbs home from, to Holland as a present for his daughter Katrina. She planted them in pebbles and water and put them in a blue bowl and put the bowl in the front window where it would get plenty of sunlight. After a few weeks, little green shoots came up through the pebbles and they grew taller. Naturally, since the bowl was in the front window, many, many people passed by and would look at it and become very interested in watching the green shoots grow day by day, especially in the, since it was winter and the city was dark and drab. See how you can see that it's winter with the snow edging the sidewalks? Just before spring, the first bud opened into a 
beautiful, lovely red tulip. A few days later, there was a yellow one, and a few days after that, a purple one. Soon all the tulips bloomed. When they bloomed, they got taller. Oh my goodness, look at all the people. Now the word spread through the city about the wonderful tulip. Merchants, also called salesmen, came. Housewives came. Students came. Officials came. Everybody came. Even the great prince of Orange came to see the tulips. See him on his white horse here? When Hendrik's neighbor saw how famous Hendrik had become because of the tulips, he offered him money to sell them, but Hendrik said no. Another neighbor offered him some handcraft furniture for a single tulip, but Hendrik said no again. One morning, when Hendrik saw the prince standing into, looking into his window, admiring the new white tulip, he came out of his house and offered to give him a, a, a tulip. It will bloom for you next si spring, sire, he said. How extraordinary, the prince explained, exclaimed. And it will multiply so that in time you will have many, many tulips, Hendrik said. When the word went around that the tulips were in the royal garden, everybody wanted one. Complete strangers came to Hendrik's door to offer him large sums of money and all kinds of gifts if he would part with just one single bow. He was offered new horses for his carriage, fine jewelry for his wife, a harpsichord. A harpsichord was made before our pianos. Even a herd of cows and a flock of geese. But every time, Hendrik refused. After the flowers had withered away, Katrina took the bowl out of the window. Now that nice young man couldn't come and wave to Kendrick every morning anymore, and he missed her. Katrina missed him too. Sometimes she would peek through the window to see if he was passing by. One day, the young man knocked on the door and asked Hendrik for his daughter's hand in marriage. <clears throat> when Hendrik saw that Katrina loved him, he asked, how will you provide for her? Which means, how will you have enough money to keep her living? The young man, whose name was Hans, said, I grow flowers and sell them. In fact, I first noticed your daughter because of the way she watered the tulips so carefully each morning. Since Hand was a florist, the florist is the man who sells flowers, Hendrik gave to Katrina a dowry of tulip bulbs. A dowry means a gift when somebody gets married. Hans knew how to take care of them, and within a few years, they multiplied by the hundreds. <gasps> Look at that. <clears throat> In time, he grew so many that each spring, his garden looked like a brightly colored striped carpet. There were tulips of every color and kind. There were so many varieties that it was hard to choose the prettiest. Now there were enough tulips for everyone. There were enough to sell to people from other countries. 
Tulips came, became well known all over the world as the Dutch flower. Today, everyone who visits Holland in the springtime can see a bowl of tulips in the front window of every house and a bed of tulips in every garden, no matter how small or how big it is. Another reason I like Holland is because I come from the state of Michigan, and in Michigan there's a city called Holland. And many years ago, people from Holland and Europe brought seeds, bulbs to Holland, Michigan, and now there are tulip bulbs all over Holland, Michigan. I think that will be all of our stories for today, but I do want to say something from the author. The very first tulips in the world appeared in the Middle East, that's what I said to you, about 400 years ago. They were grown to please a Turkish ruler who thought the flowers so special that he passed strict laws forbidding the sale of Turkey tulips to anybody else. But a man visiting from the country of Czechoslovakia stole some tulip bulbs and sent them home to a friend. And that's how they all grew. Thank you for listening to my stories today. And I hope when you go out in the gardens, you will see maybe poppies and you will see tulips and you certainly will see cherry blossom trees. So can we have a prayer, please? Dear God, we thank you for spring and all other seasons of the year. We thank you for beautiful flowers, both in the gardens and in the trees, that grow out of the earth and become so lovely. Thank you for Jesus, who also came alive after being dead. Thank you very much. Amen. And thank you for being with me for stories today.